Hey, I'm Jeff Benjamin, and you're watching the AU Review. Jeff Benjamin, thank you very much for your time. Of course. Thank you for having me. <laughs> uh, we're at KCON. Um, just finished KCON. Yes. Actually, um, just uh, the last of the concerts just happened. Um, what are your thoughts, actually, on the, on the two nights of the concerts at KCON? Yeah, I mean, I think it was really cool because last year it was it was one night of concerts but everyone was doing like maybe three songs and this time they did everyone got five songs it's just really exciting to watch um, so much you know more content to kind of take in and, and it's not so much you know all these acts to take in it's a little more broken up so I'm so happy I thought everyone did really good the the stage I was a little nervous about it was this big circle stage but they really clearly did well in looking at you know every part of the stadium and everything so it was really cool was, in your opinion who was the highlight of your uh, who was the highlight act of the M Countdown over the last two nights? I mean, well, you know, Girls' Generation, G-Dragon, CM Blue, you know, got hu huge, huge screams. IU did too. Actually, I mean, I think, you know, if I really think about it, maybe it was IU because she she really brought out some different stuff. She brought out, like, these huge disco balls at one point in the cheerleader team and um, and then brought out Teen Top's Neil <laughs> at... Um, for, uh, you know, for that duet. You know, she had some surprises that I don't think other, you know, you would have necessarily expected. So if I had to choose one, it'd probably be her. <laughs> and uh, what about uh, your panels? Uh, I believe you had a few panels uh, this weekend as well. How did they go? Yeah, it was great. It was, it was so, it's fu always fun to talk to people about, um, talk about, you know, K-pop media or, you know, I did um, one about, uh, K, yeah, K-pop media, and um, it's just cool, you know, it, when people uh, see your work and, and kind of uh, get to, you know, they say they read it or they, they recognize it or something, so it's really cool. And then I got to moderate one on K-pop photography and get to, you know, I got to talk about that world, which is exciting. I love, I'm a very visual person myself, so it was, it was a nice fit. Uh, let's talk about your background in, um, in K-pop media. How did you actually get involved? In, a, in that side of media? In the media, well, I mean, it literally just started as me being a fan, first and foremost. I, uh, you know, I was, I was just an intern, really, or I was, I was writing for, you know, freelancing and trying to do exciting things. And then, um, you know, it was just something I, I was passionate about. And, you know, I always wanted to push, um, you know, music that I think is exciting and I want people to hear, no matter if that was British pop or if it was... Latino music or whatever it was so I really was into this K-pop thing at, at that time and you know I, I, I kept pushing on my editors and, and they kind of you know I got a little pushback but eventually you know there was a there was something that connected or something that worked and you know slowly but surely they just sort of realized that okay this is something that you know fans are supporting people are coming out they want to read about it and um yeah, slowly, but this was when I was interning at Billboard, and then, um, yeah, that just kind of led into more stuff for Billboard and writing Rolling Stone's first K-pop article and, um, you know, doing uh, different things for various places like Pop Dust and Nylon Magazine, and, and then, yeah, I'll, I'll, um, I'll kind of, like, stay with Billboard as, as my, main, my main guy for, for K-pop. I guess in the Western world, in terms of K-pop, Billboard is pretty much the, the authoritative voice on K-pop because of, of, of what you write and, and the team that you work with as well. Yeah. Um, seeing the growth of that and seeing the growth of Hallyu over that time, like you, since you were at the forefront of it, what changes have you seen actually since you've actually started writing about K-pop? Well, yeah, I mean, I, at first I was, you know, I, I was literally having editors telling me, like, you know, stop trying to push K-pop, you know, K-pop's not going to happen or, you know, and um, it was, um, you know, it's just, but eventually, you know, they just couldn't deny how much, you know, fans were coming out and um, and coming out to support these articles and, you know, wanting to hear what, what we had to say about it, which was so cool. Um, and you know now instead of it being just this thing that no one knows you know it is it's part of the the conversation when you're talking about you know i read about 
I don't just write about K-pop. I write about all kinds of music, and it's part of pop music. That conversation in pop music, which you can't really say about a lot of countries, and especially foreign countries um, that don't speak English as a main language. So um, it's really kind of it's just so cool, and yeah, it's definitely got a, it's way more accepted, and yeah, I'm happy about that too.